This is Tom Bailey from the Thompson Twins. And you're listening to the New Wave Music Podcast. Well, welcome back to another episode of the New Wave Music Podcast. I am T-Bone, and I would like to turn things over to Steve. This is Steve. Usually T-Bone's joining me as well. However, he's on assignment and unable to make it. I'm joined by a true New Wave legend. He is behind such hits as Things Can Only Get Better. What is love? And life in one day. Just to name a few. Yes, of course, I'm speaking about Howard Jones. Howard, thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast. All right. Okay. Hi, Steve. So, Howard, your uh, your song, New Song, is celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. This is a song that I've seen you I've seen described as your manifesto. Can you tell our listeners about this song and the impact it's had on your career? Uh, yeah, well, it was the first song uh, that was released. Um, you know, when, when, when I got signed to uh, WEA. So uh, it was the very first time anybody really heard recorded music from me, apart from demos and cassettes we used to sell at shows. So. Uh, yeah, it was a you know very important song um, for me when it was released. Um, it rocketed into the charts at number one hundred and seven, uh, and took three months to get to number three. So it was a rocky road. Uh, we could have lost it at any moment, and the whole story could have been totally different um, if, if it hadn't have kept going. Um, but yeah, so it was, it was a very important song, and it, and it was a hit here in America as well. It got into the top thirty here. Um, and so, yeah, it was an incredibly important song for me. Yeah. So as a keyboardist, were you, in, were you also influenced by other keyboard artists or did you have other musician influences? Um, well, my, my influence is really um, from, from keyboard players. You know, Keith Emerson uh, was a huge influence on me. Stevie Wonder, um, Elton John. And I think I think those three. And I mean, I mean, I studied classical piano from the age of seven um, till till I left music college when I was, um, you know, twenty. So um, so I'd done, you know, a, a lot of my influences were classical influences as well. So it was pop music, rock music, and uh, and those three three artists really. So you were also involved with uh, Live Aid. We just recently had the anniversary of that iconic uh, performance show how did you become part of that lineup um well i i i'd missed out on band-aid because uh, I, I, I i don't know what we we were touring or something so i i didn't get to do band-aid which i really wanted to be part of that so when i heard that geldof and and um and mid-year were doing live aid i i made sure that they knew that i wanted to do it and you know they uh geldof's criterion was that you'd had to have sold a million albums um in the last six months and so i i had done that thankfully and um so yeah we, we were on tour in america we uh cancelled a few dates and i flew back to london because i wanted to do it there rather than philadelphia and went back with my backing singers aphrodisiac and uh yeah that's how that's how it happened Speaking of Mitch, he was on your 2022 U.S. tour last year. But I have to ask, how did you talk Midge into agreeing to play Do They Know It's Christmas with you in the middle of summer? Seeing um, Midge, he's pretty much swore he won't play that song outside of December. 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Well, we um, we thought we uh, I changed the lyrics. <laughs> I think <laughs> to accommodate the time of year. So, yeah, I mean, I I just said to him, you know, there's two reasons for us doing this. One, I never got to sing on this, so I I get to sing now every all the parts, <laughs> and <laughs> uh, and also, you know, people as you say never get to hear the song. Um, you know, especially with Mig, Midge singing it, so um, it, it, it fulfilled many, ticked many boxes. Really, that one. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. I'm like, Howard either has an incredible pull with Midge, or he has some incredible dirt on Midge to get him to agree to play that. <laughs> no, I mean, we're, uh, we're 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 really good friends, and um, it wasn't it wasn't a huge uh, persuasion thing, really. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I thought, you know, it was the obvious one for us to do. Yeah. Well, I'm glad he did because it was a, it was a highlight on that tour last year. That's for sure to see him come out with you and, and perform that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So and speaking of you working with other artists, uh, Nick Beggs from Kaja Gugu is currently touring with you as part of your band. I love yeah. how you take time out of your set to recognize his former band's work. You've been mm-hmm. playing too shy, but kind of with a bit of your own style. How did Nick come to be a part of your band or how did Nick come well, to be working with you? I mean, I think Nick's been in, he's first been in my, um, I think it was 27 years ago. Um, so we we have a huge history. Um, there was a period of time when I took a break from um, using any kind of, you know, real bass and real guitars. And it was just all electronic. And so Nick went and played with all kinds of amazing artists. Um, but it's in, I think it's been back in the band now for about four or five years. And it's so great to have Nick um, I, I, uh, around, you know, it's just his charisma and his presence, as well as his amazing musical ability. So, yeah, very happy that Nick's back. As your career went on, did it surprise you to see more of your songs charting higher in the U.S. versus versus the U.K., such as Lift Me Up? didn't really surprise me really because we'd america really sort of embraced me uh from the beginning um and the thing is about the uk it's very much you know you have your your window um of and of being in the spotlight and then the spotlight goes to another generation of people and so um whereas america i feel tends to support artists for 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 you know for much longer um and i think i just connected with the with the american public more than i did with the uk and so um i think that's why really in the early 90s you reworked a lot of your uh, sounds to be performed acoustically and i have to admit i was surprised on how much i loved the album live acoustic america and the mm. tours that followed hearing your songs reworked added to me so much more depth and layers to them Songs such as Pearl in the Shell. And you know I love you translated very well acoustically. Did the reception of the songs being performed acoustically uh, take you by surprise? Um, no, I no, I I I don't think so. I think um, it could, because I always felt it was about the songs. You know, that's why that's why people liked the music was about the songs, and you know, it was really fun for me to play them in that way. I mean, a lot of them were composed. I mean, it surprised me how well they worked acoustically. I mean, I didn't quite expect that um but i think mainly what the audience is like is the intimacy of those shows you know they're in smaller venues and so you you know i do a lot of talking and you know it's just that sort of those intimate shows are usually people's favorite so when you strip the songs back to their basic form and and play them acoustically it's um 
I think it's 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 really fun for the fans. Before we get talking about your new album, um, one question did come up from our listeners. Is there an album of yours that you would say is your personal favorite? Um, I think it actually, I would say it was the People album is my current personal favorite. So let's talk about your most recent album, Dialogue. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's all synth and keyboards. Was that due to the pan- pandemic when it was produced, or was that the plan all along as to do a full electronic album? Yeah, yeah, it was very much a plan, you know, to do, to carry on in the vein of the Transform album before. And um, I had plenty of time in the studio being locked down, you know, in Somerset. So I had loads of time to work on sounds um, and, uh, you know, writing. And yeah, so. And I didn't really have access to other people either. So you know, I couldn't really get together. I don't really think you can work um, online at the moment because of the delay and the, you know, the sort of, um, you know, the technology is not quite there yet. I mean, I expect it will get there, but it's not there yet. So, yeah, so it was very, it was me in the studio really coming up with it, um, which I enjoyed. And uh, yeah. One thing I really liked uh, about the latest album is just how how much it's full of positivity throughout that album. A lot of albums that were written during 2020, a lot of artists kind of reflected it during the times, and it's something a lot of people don't want to relive or re-listen to. But your latest album continues that multi-decade streak of positive messages in your music. How important is that positivity to you creatively? Uh, well, it's 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 really it's the the re- it's the reason why I do this. You know, is to um, use the music as a vehicle for um, being useful to people. Um, you know, everyone goes through hard times all the time. It's, it, it's never ending. You know, th- there will be something around the corner you didn't expect. And I feel that when there's a piece of music that says, yeah, I know it's I know it's bad at the moment, but, you know, you can turn this around and you can um, create value from this, whatever it is. and that's always been my sort of main theme with the music is like it should give you a boost and um you know hope for the future um i think that's what i like to get from music you know and so i want to put that into my music and that's always been there since day one and um i won't be changing that <laughs> i'm glad i think that works very well it's a, it's a style that's your own and it, it is very unique and uplifting and it's a great listen to as a fan to listen to that type of music. So we reviewed dialogue last year on the podcast and really enjoyed it. Usually on the podcast, we're given our recommendation on tracks that were highlights to us, but I'd love to hear what tracks on dialogue that you would recommend to our audience to check out. Um, well, I mean, celebrate together is, is, is my current favorite. We're actually playing it on the, on, on the tour. You know, I collaborated with with BT on on that one, and uh, I got uh, Lifelike to do a, a remix. You know, Laurent, the French house guy, um, it was introduced to me by by BT, and he's done two two remixes now. So we're we're doing the the Lifelike remix version live, and um, I, I, this song was was designed to be the most positive thing that I'd ever written because you know, we're just coming out of the pandemic. And I just felt this is the time when we really need to be celebrating the fact that we're still here. We've, we've survived. We're still, we're still alive. And um, it's going to be great to be sort of looking, looking at each other in the eye and, and speaking to each other. And it sort of sums up the whole uh, feeling of, you know, the, the album, which is dialogue, you know, communication. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's 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 my that's my tip. Well, on on a personal question or a selfish question, I just need to ask. I really enjoyed the track "Who You Really Want to Be." To me, it sounds like it could have come off of some of your earlier works. How did that song come about? You know, I, I, I don't know if I can remember how it came about. To be honest, um, I'm just going to play it so I'm gonna trigger my. Um... You 
Yeah, yeah. That's all coming back to me now. I mean, it, it, it's obviously there's lines that actually refer to 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 the lockdown and um, being isolated from the from, from people, and and you know it 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 was it was a time to to reflect on how you really wanted your life to go. You know, I mean, because I, I I feel that that people feel that they don't have agency over the way their lives go, but we we always do. You know, and I was kind of wanting to remind people of that, that we can design the way we want our lives to be and then just gradually work towards it, put in the work and, um, you know, look out for, for the opportunities that can that can push you towards the the life you particularly would like to live. And I think it's really important, especially for young people to realize they don't have to fit into this grid and um be you know um dominated by uh, you know a, a, a corporate world that just wants to use you to to work for them you can find a situation in life um that suits you and suits your creativity and and suits who you are so you know finding out who you really want to be is the question and uh keep refining that you know and keep refining the answer to that so can we expect a follow-up to dialogue in the near future? Um, well, I'm, you know, the next album is going to be called Global Citizen. And I'm just thinking about how I, what, what I don't think it's going to sound anything like dialogue and transform at the moment. Um, it's going to be uh, quite a different record. Um, I think I'm going to collaborate with people that I've worked with over the years and invite them to do like solos and um contributions to you know to the album um because i know people i guess now for in you know across the world um who have become friends and um you know with the theme of global citizen that that could be what good it's going to be much more piano based because i've got a new steinway uh spirio which um can, records my performances and plays them back physically in the rooms so, and i can then edit my my performances so i'll be using that because uh, i haven't used that in in my work yet um and then i'm thinking of using um an ai um rendering of, of my own voice that that bt is working on um so that if ever i should lose my voice or ever be like a horse or something or you know uh, have sore throat i can still create music uh with my own voice um i he's also developed some hybrid voices you know female voices and and i i want to create ai choirs um u- using that and um and also not work to a grid this time so all the music won't won't be to click it will be uh, the tempos will freely move around and uh, the technology will follow that. So those are my sort of parameters for for the next record. You know, I, I probably will stick to it, but there'll probably be some exceptions as well. But it's good to have a, a set of rules, I think, for a, for a record, uh, and then it has a kind of consistency then when you um, when you when you finally finish it. Well, another listener question we had from Christine was: We all know you love to keep busy and create. But what do you do in your downtime to recharge and what fuels you and your inspiration? Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm pretty much, I, 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 um, you know, music is everything in my life. That's the main focus. You know, I'm either touring or in the studio working. Um, what do I do? I mean, you know, I practice Buddhism. So that's, that's part, big part of my life. So I chant um, Nami Horenga Kyo every day and parts of the lotus sutra and um i have a responsibility in somerset to to look after other buddhists and so that's a a, another big part of my life um i'm a big formula one fan and i love my favorite driver is um lewis hamilton so i uh i i make sure i watch all the wherever i am in the world i always watch the grand prix and and the 
qualifying and things like that. So between those three things, it keeps me pretty busy. You're uh, currently touring the U.S. now as part of the Lending It Go show along with Berlin and Culture Club. How's that tour going? I think it well, just kicked off, right? Yeah, yeah. We're three shows in and it is like so great. I mean, it's absolutely uh, fantastic. I'm really enjoying it. The audiences have been amazing. Um, George came on our tour bus last night and said hello and we had a great chat. And um, I met um, Terry Nunn uh, on, on, at the second show. And yeah, it is a great, great um, feeling within the touring party. You know, it's not it's not like that, but it's um, it's a very harmonious traveling group. So yeah, yeah, really, um, really recommend that people see this one because it's just great. It's just a great show. Yeah, it looks like it's a fantastic uh, lineup, and you guys are touring, I believe, through middle of August. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, I think we we um, yeah towards the end of August we we, we finish in uh, well I do anyway in um, um, in San Francisco and then we we uh, head back to the UK. We've got dates in Canada and dates in Japan, and then we do like our fortieth anniversary tour um, in the UK in October. So yeah, so um, it's a busy rest of the year now. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about that. It looks like you're going to be starting your celebrating 40 years tour in the in the UK this fall. Yeah. Um, looking ahead down the road, is there any plans to bring a 40th anniversary tour to the US as well? Um I I that that I don't have plans um for that, but I will be back touring next summer in some form. Um so I don't know what that's going to be yet. It's a bit early, <laughs> but, I, but, but all I know, all I can say is we will definitely be touring here next year. Yeah. Well, we're located in Salt Lake City. You've always had a strong presence here. I can't even yeah. count the number of times I've seen you in concert. Do you have yeah. any theories why you are so loved here in Salt Lake? Um. Yeah, I do. I have a theory, and I think because my audience in Salt Lake, they're very they they love the idea of you know friendship and family being very important and i think that i you know through my lyrics that they picked that up that that is what i'm about as well and at the same time i have a sort of open mind towards the world and celebrate difference and celebrate diversity and and I think they connect with that as well. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I apart from that, I mean, I, I, or maybe, and and maybe those early shows that I did um, up at Park City. Uh, first time I uh, was when I opened for Eurythmics there, and I don't know. It just it was such a brilliant day and a brilliant evening. Just w- went incredibly well. Um, and then I came back there doing my own shows several times. And we just made that bond, I think. And that bond has been um, there ever since. So oh, yeah, I was, I remember those Park yeah. City shows were legendary. Mm. Um, I've been to some of those. I think you even recorded your live acoustic America show here when you did it in Salt Lake. And you've mm. also been coming through for about like a week stay as, as the Howard Jones trio. Yes. Yes, that's right. That's right. There's I've done um yeah so many shows there. Yeah, yeah. When when we were playing um up at the Egyptian Theatre, I think yeah, we did ten nights. I think it was a the most <laughs> nights in a row that anybody would ever done. <laughs> and uh, um and, and Brandon Brandon Flowers came down um uh, you know with his kids to see the show, and I got to hang out with him afterwards, and that that was really great. So, Howard, my last question for you I have is finally, as a synth- as synthesizers become more and more advanced and they can create sounds that you've never expect, do you find yourself looking for or creating sounds that you've never heard before? Um, well, <laughs> I mean, I think it becomes more, uh, it, it was certainly the case in the early days, not so much now. Um, I think the way that technology is going now is going to be, um, you know, in the sort of vocal area where, you know, and I was saying about um, having a sort of AI version of your voice 
stored away. Um, and I think that what musicians will be doing will be using that technology in really, really creative ways. I mean, you know, when when anything new comes out, like AI, like say for instance, sampling, everybody freaked out about sampling, saying it was going to ruin music. And no, well, no, but creative people use these new things to make music to excite people, you know. Um, there's always people who are going to use it for a um a nefarious negative reason. Um but the you know the upside of of the these technologies is amazing. And so I look forward to doing that. You know, I mean when I first did my one man electronic show, the you know the musicians union wanted to ban me, you know, uh, I couldn't from from their membership. And um but you know, when anything new, people freak out. But there's going to be great, interesting, creative developments with all that. So let's um, hope that everyone will get on board with the positive side of, of this technology. Speaking of the kind of like AI voice work that you're doing, you're recording yourself yeah. on there. Do you think it could be possible decades from now we still may be hearing Howard Jones' vocals on a song? Yeah, yeah, uh, yes, I do, and I think that. Um, um, you know, if it's uh, because the 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 vocals, um, the AI version will be encoded. Um, it it would mean that you, you know you can't use it without permission, and you 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 can't use it without making sure that there's compensate compensation for the for the for the person. So yeah, I I think I think this will happen. I think it will be very interesting. Um, how we navigate uh, that because there'll be people who will, you know, I mean, I heard recently of a, of a person who is a voice actor and a, a big, a big tech company um, had used their voice for, for adverts. And then um, they made an AI version of, of, of his voice um, and made adverts you know, without his consent and without his knowledge and without him being paid. So that's the that's the downside of it. So we have to all be really careful that we don't allow, allow that to happen to 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 our voices. You know, and uh, um, yeah. So there's it's, so the more we know about it, the more we're on top of it, um, the better. But you know, there is a there's always somebody trying to make money out of people without compensating them. You know. So we have to be careful of that. Just like you were in the 80s on the forefront of innovation mm-hmm. for sound, you're doing it again with something I couldn't even fathom a few minutes ago is talking about mm-hmm. AI for the artists, uh, for musicians. Yeah, so, yeah, that's right. It's going to be big. Yeah, so we'll remember that like 10 years from now when it starts blowing up that Howard was was the one behind that push. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, um, there's lots <laughs> of people doing it, I'm sure. Lots of people on it. Um yeah, I just keep up with the news. <laughs> well, Howard, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today on the New Wave Music Podcast. Uh, okay. Before we go, can you tell our listeners where's the best way to stay up to date with any music releases that you have, any tour dates, uh, any any updated Howard Jones news? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, Facebook is is still the biggest social okay. media for me. But I mean, if you want to find out personally what I'm doing. Is Twitter. I'm still everything on Twitter is 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 done by me, um, and it always has been for I don't know 13 years now. So so that's the sort of closest thing to me. Then we do Instagram. I'm not so connected with, um, but you know information. I mean information really. The first place is Facebook. Yeah, for tours and all that. Yeah. Well, Howard, again, thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. You've been a bucket list interview for me. I've been a fan of yours for decades. It's been a pl- privilege for me to talk with you and learn some new fascinating information from you. Okay, Steve. Thank you. Thanks for doing it. All Thanks, the best. Howard. Bye now. Well, Steve, that was fantastic. I learned a lot of things that I did not know about Mr. Hojo. So our next episode is going to be some album reviews. We're going to be looking at the latest from Lloyd Cole and Miles Hunt of The Wonder Stuff. And then, of course, you can find us on our social media, whether that be Instagram, Facebook, Uh, You can always uh, look at our website, which is newwavemusicpodcast.com. And we would love to hear from you about your thoughts on these episodes, on upcoming album potential reviews. 
Send us your ideas. We love to hear from our listeners. Uh, We really appreciate you listening, and we'll catch you on the next episode. 